Hello there and welcome to this session on revision. We are going to have a look at why revision is important, what revision actually is, and show you some strategies and techniques that you can have a go at in order to support you with your revision for any subject. So let's have a quick look at some statistics about revision. You may have seen these figures before, you might not have, but it's always good to remind ourselves that 66% of the material that we learned in a class or from reading a book is actually forgotten after seven days. If we don't go back to it, by six weeks, we've lost 88% of the material that we've learned. That's an awful lot. And an unfortunate statistic for a lot of you is the fact that simply reading your notes and looking at textbooks actually will only help you retain about an extra 10%. So you can probably get the idea that I'm not going to be suggesting to you that you just simply reread your notes and look at textbooks. Notes are useful, textbooks are useful, but there are far more effective strategies that you can have a go at in order to support you with your revision. So let's be logical about this. If you are going to revise effectively, you actually need to be organised. It's not something that you're just going to simply plonk yourself down on the floor and get on with. So first off, think about where you're going to sit to revise. Is it going to be at a desk? Is it going to be at a table? It can be on the sofa, but it needs to be somewhere designed specifically for studying for you. What are you going to study? It's no good just sitting down and going, I'm going to revise English. I'm going to revise chemistry. That's far too big a task to tackle. It needs to be a very specific task that you are attempting to revise. A small section of the curriculum, a page that you have done in your notes, and it needs to be realistic. Telling yourself that you're going to sit down and you're going to revise the whole of Macbeth in one go is simply not going to work. You're going to feel unsuccessful and you're going to not want to continue. You need to think about how you revise. It's good to mix up revision with things that you like um, to study versus the things that you're not really that interested in and go back again to the things that you like. Some students, quite a lot of students, and I perhaps was one of them, do like to just keep going over the things that they enjoy. The problem with that is the things that you don't enjoy are often the things that you find most difficult, so therefore are actually things that you really do need to be cracking on with. So by starting with something that you like, then moving on to something that you find either a little bit more challenging or something that actually you don't really like and then finishing off again by going back to something that you like means that you are more likely to stay focused on your revision. The next thing to consider is when you should revise. The most effective time to revise is different for everybody. Some people will find themselves most alert first thing in the morning and will actually find it useful to do some revision before you start school. Other people, that's absolutely the worst time of the day to be revising. Um, they're far better um, as soon as they get in from school. For other people, they need to get in, they need to unwind a little bit, and then they focus on their revision in the evenings. You need to work out what times of the day are you feeling most alert, so they are then the times that you need to be scheduling your revision for. Why? Why do we revise? We've already talked about the statistics that show that if you don't come back to material within a week, you've lost 66% of what you've learned. So revision isn't learning. You can't revise something that you didn't learn in the first place. So probably one of the most important things that I can say to you about revision is actually make sure that what you're doing in the classroom you understand. Make sure that you learn as much as you can when you're in the classroom and you have the opportunity to talk to your um, subject specialists. Because 
Revision is about reviewing what you actually have already learnt. You're just trying to make sure that you can access it easily and you're constantly going over it so that it is there at the front of your mind if you get a question on it. Notes. There is a nasty habit amongst people who are revising, and again, I would have included myself in this back when I was your age, that writing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of notes, copying out everything that you've done in class is helpful. Actually, less is more. You really need to be engaging with the material. Simply copying it out isn't actually going to do that much for you. So by taking your notes and having to condense them into a, a shorter or smaller format, you've actually had to um, transform the material, you've actually had to manipulate it, do something with it, so you are far more likely, when you then read those notes again, you're far more likely to remember the information that you were going over in the first place, rather than if you're simply copying. When we just copy things, we tend to move on to autopilot. We don't really engage with the material and we certainly don't remember it. So what do you do after a revision session? Is that it? Is it enough to just sit there and go over the material once? Or is there a strategy that will help you to ensure that you will be able to remember everything that you've just reviewed? Well, yes, there is. If the next day you just spend five minutes going back over that topic that you revised that will put it back into the forefront of your mind just remind you of everything that you went over the day before one week later again go back and just look at your notes again just revise the topic for another two to five minutes no more than five minutes again just to keep it fresh in your mind just in the forefront of your thinking a month later, go back and look at it again. And before the exams, obviously, go back to it and have a look at it as and when you need to. But if you constantly, regularly, just go back and look at these topics for two, three, four minutes, it's going to keep it fresh in your mind. It's going to make it far more likely that you remember the information when you are faced with an exam question, okay? Each time that you reinforce the knowledge by looking at the material again, it goes deeper into your long term memory. It becomes more stable and far more accessible for you. So we're going to spend the next few minutes looking at some reasons as to why we never actually get to grips with the revision in the first place and how we can perhaps tackle some of those issues, meaning that we can make sure that our revision is far more effective. So we're going to look at dealing with distractions. OK, so one of the most common things I've heard over the years from students is I start my revision and I just start daydreaming. Well, this is where we've talked about engaging with the material. If you simply just copy or you simply just read your notes, it's far more likely that you are going to start daydreaming. So be an active learner, use a pen and a paper, give yourself a specific task. So that might be doing practice exam questions. It might be transforming a page of notes into a series of bullet points. It might be turning a diagram into an explanation. It doesn't matter what the task is. And actually the time isn't overly important. Focus on what the specific task is and allow yourself to complete that task before you drift off with the daydreaming. So another thing that I've heard a lot over my time as a teacher is I can't revise because I'm really, really anxious about my exams. At the end of the day, exams make us all anxious. They're important. Anything that could have an effect on us and our futures it is going to be anxiety inducing, but there are things that we can do to help. So try to limit yourself to specific concerns rather than general, oh, I've got exams, I don't know what to do. Try and look at what you actually have some control over. So you have control over your preparation for the upcoming revision, okay? You have control over 
what you study and when you study okay so there's things that you can't control you can't control what questions are going to come up on the paper but you can feel more in control of those things if you know that you've got a fairly good grip on all of the topics that you studied in that subject that year okay so this next one i've heard um quite a bit as a teacher um i fall asleep when I am supposed to be studying. Now, there's actually a number of reasons that this could be happening, but the most common ones are either you've chosen the wrong time of day to study. So we talked a little bit earlier about scheduling and planning your revision when you're, you're most alert. And for everybody, that isn't necessarily in the evenings. So if you know you're particularly sleepy in the evenings, then don't schedule your revision then. Look at maybe doing it earlier in the day when you get home from school um, or doing it in the morning before you go to school even. The other reason for falling asleep when you're supposed to be studying is actually you are just generally overtired. It is easy to stay up late on phones, on social media, on um, gaming consoles or even just watching telly. Um, it isn't that easy to just say okay go to bed but when you're in a long revision period you do need to try and make sure that you are getting regular rest that you are getting to bed at a reasonable time your body can get rest your body can recover um, a tired brain is a very unproductive brain so do make sure that you're getting genuine rest at the weekends make sure you're getting regular exercise make sure that you're eating properly that you're hydrating by drinking properly all of these things will help you feel more alert when you are supposed to be studying so this one constantly being interrupted by other people isn't just limited to people who live in houses with lots of siblings um, or lots of relatives in the house it's just as likely to happen when you're completely and utterly on your own and the reason for that is mobile phones so if it's your family members that are constantly interrupting you then what you've got to do is you've got to try and find a location to study in that is most likely to offer you some peace and quiet okay it's quite reasonable to say to your family that you need some help and you need some support that you need to be able to concentrate so can they please leave you alone at a certain time in order for you to focus on your revision. The other thing to do is to make sure that there's not a TV or your phone or computer games, anything like that within arm's reach while you're trying to work. It's very easy to be distracted by people sending you Snapchat, by notifications from your Facebook or your TikTok. Um, you really need to try and make a rule of not looking at your phone when you're trying to do your revision because interruptions aren't just people walking into the room to talk to you interruptions from other people can come in a variety of sources so minimize the likelihood that somebody else is going to be able to interrupt your studying so on the surface this one looks a little bit um like the i get distracted by going off into a daydream but it's not this is when you're trying to study and you keep getting distracted by all the little things that you need to remember. Thoughts pop into your head. I've forgotten to feed the cat. Um, I've got to pick my sister up from school tomorrow. All of those things can distract you from studying. So first of all, perhaps rather than going for a longer revision session, shorter revision sessions, if you're particularly prone to this, is probably more helpful. If you divide the study session into smaller goals, um, but for a short period of time, then you're more likely to be able to give it your full attention. And a helpful tip is if you keep um, a piece of paper or a little pad um, beside you, if a thought comes into your head, you must remember to feed the cat. You can write it down and then it's there for you to deal with um, as soon as you finish your revision, rather than it then playing on your mind whilst you're actually trying to study um, because you've made a note of it you know that you can come back to it um, in five minutes ten minutes half an hour and that will make it more likely that you can easily refocus on your work 
So now on to the bit that I bet you thought this whole session was all about, the actual revision activities themselves. So I'm going to go through some, but the, the point of this session is as much about how to revise and why to revise as much as it is giving you ideas for revision activities because you will get lots of ideas for revision activities from your teachers and if you're not sure where to start then any of your subject teachers will be more than happy to talk to you don't forget that um, in period six when you're having revision sessions you will be able to get lots and lots of different ideas and you'll be able to try them out as well but in the meantime here are some quick ideas that you can get started with so mind maps we've all done the mind maps where we're linking ideas from a big topic into increasingly specific and more focused areas keywords post-its some students um, swear by constantly looking at keywords around their house and our whole house is covered in random post-it notes with keywords and they'll even go so far as to have different rooms for different subjects so when they're in the bathroom they're looking at keywords for Spanish and when they're in the bedroom they're looking at keywords for English and that means that when they're sitting in the exam and they're trying to recall the keywords they simply visualize the room in their house where those post-it notes are and it helps them to remember the key words. Flashcards. Now, some people really like flashcards, they work really well for them, and for other people, they don't. But with flashcards, what we're talking about is having a series of questions on one side um, or a keyword on one side, and then answers or definitions on the other. This is quite useful if you want somebody else to be able to test what you've learned so far because they don't actually need to have any knowledge of the subject. You can simply give them your flashcards and they can ask you the questions or they can ask you the keywords and you can give them the information that's on the card and they can check whether what you said is right or wrong without having any particular knowledge of that subject. Okay, podcasts. There are lots of YouTube videos out there um, from people who have been where you've been or who are subject specialists might be teachers might be university students a level students um, and they can be really really useful and if you are the type of student that likes to get your information by listening to somebody else talking um, then that's probably quite useful for you family and friends test so we've already talked about the fact that you can use flashcards to get your 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 family um, and your friends to test you but there are also lots of other ways that you can do it you can obviously give them a revision guide um, and they can ask you questions from it you can give them a series of questions with the correct answers written down and they can they can test you on it there's lots and lots of ways that you can get your friends and family involved okay highlighting highlighting has some use it's probably not the most effective revision technique but certainly when you're doing your first read through of your notes going through and highlighting can be useful if all you do is highlight then in the long term it probably won't be very effective but as a starting point it's okay chanting rapping there are lots of songs lots of poems lots of raps that either are already out there and created to help you remember certain things um, equally particularly if you're quite creative then you can make up your own your own songs your own chants your own poems your own raps things that will help you to remember the information um, I think most of us have all heard the horrible history song where they can go all the way through with all the kings and queens throughout history and I've heard a number of students be able to um, list all of the kings and queens in order because they learnt that song from horrible histories. Never underestimate the power of music with trying to help you remember things. This is probably one of the most effective things that you can actually do for revision and that is past exam questions and a mark scheme. So you know exactly how the exam board wanted you to answer the question if you don't know how to get hold of past questions speak to your subject teachers they will be able to give you loads of the things okay this has been proven to be one of the most effective ways to revise 
In order to be able to answer a question successfully, you have to have been able to recall all the key facts, you have to have been able to understand how they all fit together, and you have to be able to put them in your own words. So I would suggest that whatever revision activity you do, you always make sure that somewhere in there, there is at least one exam question that you can check your understanding of the topic. And there's writing your own questions. This only works if you can be absolutely certain of your answers, but if you've got your revision notes or you've got your revision guides there, writing your own questions and answers that you can use somebody um, else to test you on or you can swap with a friend can be quite useful. Mnemonics um, kind of comes into a little bit into the sort of poem, chant or rap strategy. But if you need to remember a certain um, number of facts in a particular order, say, for example, um, the elements in the reactivity series, then making a mnemonic where um, each letter of the thing that you want to remember is the first line in your mnemonic that can be quite helpful. So what we've got here is um, a strategy for how you can link your revision sessions together and how you can actually structure and plan an individual re revision session. So the first place we always start is by identifying what resources you're going to use. It could be reading textbooks, notes, revision guides. It could be, as we've already said, by listening to podcasts or YouTube videos. Um, it doesn't really matter, but you need to identify what resources you're going to use. Once you've got your resources and you've got your information, you then need to reduce that information down. Again, you can do this any way that you want to. It might be flashcards, mind maps. It could be writing bullet points. It could be creating diagrams. It's what works for you, but you're taking that information and you're reducing it down in terms of size and content. Then you need to check that you can actually remember it. So you need to practice recalling the information, answering short answer questions, creating the mnemonics or the acronyms to help you, chunking the information down into little pieces so that you can easily remember it. Then you need to apply it to a different situation. So this is where I said you really want to be in every revision session having a go at, at least one exam question because this is where you're going to find out if everything that you have learnt, everything that you have reviewed, everything that you think you've remembered, have you actually and can you apply it in a new situation. And then you need to review your progress. So you need to be honest with yourself and you need to see where the gaps in your learning and your revision are because then you're going to need to go back and you're going to need to fill those gaps. And you can do this through self-assessment, peer assessment. It will come from your teacher marking um, some of your work and revision sessions that you do with your teacher. It can be from um, doing some exam analysis. There's lots and lots of different ways. But the common um, thing that they've they've all got is that they identify what you still are struggling to remember. And you need to make sure that that then becomes a priority. So if, for example, you have been revising um, photosynthesis in biology and you're really good at remembering the structure of the plant, including the leaf and the cell, you're great at remembering the equation for photosynthesis, but you can't really explain what happens to glucose once it's been made, then that's where you need to start in your next revision session. Knowing where the gaps in your knowledge are is as useful as going over the stuff that you can easily remember. So well done on getting to the end of this. Hopefully you found it useful. Hopefully there are some things in there that you think, okay, yep, I'm gonna give those a try. Um, it's never too early to start your revision. The earlier you start, the less you'll have to do immediately prior to the exams. And please remember that you have a whole host of staff who are there ready and willing to help you. They are all experts in revision in their subject. So if you're not quite sure where to start with a particular subject, just go and ask your subject teacher. They'll be more than happy to help you. Good luck 
enjoy the rest of the resources and videos from the success evening and I wish you luck in your revision.